Elden Ring is now officially one week old, and if you're just starting the game or wanting to get into it, here's a quick video to show the classes and keepsakes and everything they can do to benefit your start to a long adventure. It's also important to talk about stats and what each stat can do to help your playstyle while traveling to the lands in between. So stick around, and let's get right into it. Let's start with the top stat and make our way down the list. Vigor can affect your health points alongside fire and re poison resistance. Mine will affect focus points, aka your magic. It also affects focus related resistances such as sleep and madness debuffs. Endurance will affect stamina, physical resistance, your equipment load, and your robustness. Strength can allow users to wield heavy weapons and will affect your attack power alongside strength grade with that weapon. Dexterity does a lot of different things, like allow the user to wield advanced weapons such as a one-handed weapon. It also boosts attack power just like strength, and it affects dexterity grade with weapons. It also reduces cast time for spells, affects fall damage, and how hard it is to get knocked off torrent. Intelligence lets you perform glintstone sorcery, or in other words, magic. It boosts your magic damage and intelligence grade with weapons that are mo mainly used with magic. And it also boosts magic itself. And the last thing it affects is your magic damage resistance. Faith will allow users to cast incantations, or in my words, prayers. It will boost faith damage for incantations and weapons graded in faith. Arcane is basically your luck with finding items off of enemies you've killed, and affects one-shot resistances, and it also can affect some incantation and spells. Now that stats have been addressed, let's take a look into each starting class and what they come with, as well as their playstyle. Keep in mind you could start with any class and mix your gear up along the way. You're not locked into what class you choose. It only benefits you till you find stronger gear. As you can see, the Vegabond is your typical knight class, coming in with a sword, shield, and a halibird, alongside some pretty decent armor. As you can see, Vigor is the top stat for the Vegabond. So this is a pretty good tanky class for the beginning of the game. It also comes with some decent strength and deck, so you could really mix it up if you want. As you can see, the warrior comes with two swords and a small shield. That's great for parrying. It also comes with a really bad set of armor. The only thing that's really good around here is the chest piece. Everything else is just not going to help you that much. But as you can see on the far right, dexterity is the highest stat for the warrior. So this is a great dex build if you want to get started with a bunch of dex early on and have two swords and a shield. The Hero. This is the class I chose on day one, just because it looks like a viking. It comes with a medium shield and a battle axe. As you can see on the far right, this is a great strength, endurance, and vigor build. But along for magic and dex, you're not going to have that good of a time. As the armor set is not great either. This armor set is very bad at damage negation but it is super light. The bandit comes with a small buckler shield and a dagger, alongside a bow. As you can see, the bandit's armor is not too great, besides maybe the bandit guards. But on the far right, dex, arcane, and mine are its highest stats, so you're going to be discovering a lot of stuff, alongside having a great amount of FP in the beginning for summons and other stuff like that, because you're going to need it. The Astrologer. They come with a small shield, a staff, and a trusty sword. Now if you want a cake walk through this game, this is the class for you. Coming in with a nice amount of intelligence, dex, and mind. You're going to have a great time with some dexterity weapons, you know, magic, all that stuff. Armor is not too great, but you're not going to need armor if you're standing halfway across the battlefield casting spells at everything. I've never used a mage in other Souls games, because I know the magic is so strong. But I made an astrologer as my second class, after the hero, 
And I can tell you, I kill every single boss without getting touched. If you just time your rolls right, you're fine. You can take out anything, and it doesn't even take that much FP. Look at these spells I'm casting, still going. The Prophet. They come with a finger seal, a spear, and a shield. As you can see, they don't have a glove slot, and their other armor is not too good either. On the far right, their faith and mind are super high, along with some pretty decent strength and dexterity, so you can go either way you want. For incantations, they have heal and catch fire. So this is almost like a pyromancer. The Samurai. They come with a bow, katana, and a small shield. As you can see, their armor is not too bad. And they also come with fire arrows. On the far right, their dexterity, endurance, vigor, mind, strength, it's pretty much all high up there. With dexterity being their highest stat. But you could really take this character any way you want. The Prisoner. They come with a small shield, a thrusting sword, and a staff. As you can see, their armor is not too good besides their head, and they don't even have a glove. On the far right, they have a lot of great stats. Intelligence, Dexterity, Mind, and then Eleven's all for Vigor, Endurance, Strength. That is just crazy. This, this is a great build to start with. Alongside it coming with this nice staff for you to cast spells. As you can see though, it's not like the astrologer. Because this takes up a lot of FP. The confessor is like if the prophet and the bandit had a baby. It just has a bigger shield with 100% physical damage resistance, a sword, and a finger seal for you to heal yourself, or even cast a Silent Footstep spell that also reduces your fall damage. Their armor is not too bad either. And on the far right, their faith, it's pretty high. Strength and dex, you can go either way with it, and their mind is pretty great for a start. The Wretch. They come with nothing but a club. And with 10 stats going all the way down, this is your neutral build. You don't have to stay naked forever though. If you get past the first tutorial area and go outside, there'll be a little vendor there that you could probably spend around 5,000 runes to buy some chainmail armor if you want to go for that. Other than that, you can go farm the soldiers around the, the beginning area in the forest. They'll probably drop you some armor, some weapons, but... Don't think you're going to have to use this club for too long. Now here's an overview of all the classes and stats and everything they come with. If you'd like to take a second and pause, go right ahead. Now let's go over each keepsake and what they can do. The Crimson Amber Medallion is a great starting item to boost your HP. It only boosted by like 30 points, but that's still enough to get you out of an extra hit or something. Especially with the physical shield like the Vagabond has. The Lands Between Ruins give you 3000 ruins per pop. The Golden Seed will give you an extra charge in your flask, so you can have up to 5 in the beginning, I'm pretty sure. The Fanged Imped Ashes let you summon the Imps. A Cracked Pot will let you craft some bombs and other stuff like that. Stone Sword Key will get you to secret areas and other stuff like that with the Imp Statues. The Bewitching Branch will let you charm an enemy if you hit them with it. The Boiled Prawn will give you a boost to physical damage negation. And the Shabba Riri's Woo. This will attract enemies' aggression. I'm not even sure I said that right. Thank you for watching my first ever video. If you want more, please go and give me a follow on my Twitch or right here on YouTube.